And when you start having refugees coming to your church, these are some amazing people with great skills, but they've lost everything and they've come to you. Many of them are traumatized because what they've seen back home was so tragic. They've lost their maybe properties, but more than that, they've lost their beloved ones. And so they come hurt from the past. Some, some of them are angry from God for all that happened. Some of them have seen beloved ones being raped and it's very difficult and, and awful. And they come to RCB with uh, a history and our role is to stand by them and to serve them and to love them and to help them get healed from the past and to build a bridge over it is not an easy thing. More than that, they come with uh, no, I mean, the basics of their lives are not there. They don't have food, they don't have no medications, and they need a lot of help. So as a church, our role is really to help them holistically in helping them get healed from the past, in helping them and provide for their needs, whether food or medication or winterization or winter uh, kits and other things. And they need education. So they come and they need their kids to go to school. They want them to learn and to grow and they have no hope. So what we try to do is to develop schools for them so that our ministry is quite holistic. And they come with spiritual needs. They have issues with God. They have issues with humanity. They've been hurt by politics and by those in authorities. So our role really is to help them and serve them and show them Christ in our daily life. We do our best, we are human beings, we make mistakes, and we try together to become a better community. We focus on what is strong in them and not what is wrong. We try to involve them in ministry, as you've seen today. There are some of them, they have skills and gifts, and they are involved in different ministries. And we try to serve them as a church in a holistic way. We partner with others so that we can do that. We believe that we live in times where we should not be competing with one another, but completing one another. So we bring around us partners and friends so that we can serve this great need together and bring about the kingdom of God in a powerful way. Amen. Just one more thing. You mentioned that they have, they also have issues with God. How do you help them understand where God is in their suffering? Yeah. Well, God and the suffering is, is a big topic. And uh, people go through pain and sometimes they have really difficult questions. We are not here to answer their questions. We're here to walk alongside them as we together discover through a pathway of discipleship, how we can understand God and what's going on through suffering. It is quite amazing that some of them um, experience the presence of God in a mighty way through visions and dreams. Other, others, others, through reading the scriptures, they understand the pain and the struggle of those in the Bible in a deeper way than us ourselves. Now, personally, I grew up in the civil war and through 16 years of civil war, I've been through that and I've asked all the difficult questions. My father died as a result of the war and, and, and I, I can understand where they are, but I believe in an amazing God who can redeem and he can restore and transform the lives of so many people. A lot of those who come to us broken, God is the Lord of those who experience brokenness and he transformed that and worked through us and through the pain to bring about his kingdom in a mighty way. So the answer is really him. And our job is to love and to care, to listen, to be attentive to their needs and to do our best to serve them. Wow, because Ibtisan told us that this crisis has actually brought us uh, closer to God. Is that a common experience? Um, it is in the presence of the church. I think if there's no church, they're becoming more agnostics. They are leaving God and they don't want to do anything with religion. So when they come to us, we help them see that it's a, about a relationship with God, a Father who cares for us, and that the outcome of our sin, we're all infected by sin. And this is why we hurt one another and we hate one another. And this is what's going on in the world. So we try to redeem that by bringing the love of God in the life and in the daily life of uh, the people we work with.